Hey guys, welcome to another Python tutorial video. So today we're going to be talking about a few things pertaining to Python syntax. If you've never heard of the word syntax before, um, syntax is just kind of a um, another word for grammar in the sense of languages and learning what a language does. Um, you have to know the format of how a language is written, right? So how do we write a sentence? You know, there's a lot of grammar that goes into a proper way of writing a sentence. Or how do we divide paragraphs? Or um, how do we determine what type of word to use in a specific position? Right? These are all very important things. And what type of punctuation do we use? That's also a very important thing to note. Um, so today we're actually going to be talking about Python syntax. Syntax. There we go. I don't know what that was, <laughs> but we're going to be talking about a few things. Um, more focused on the little things in Python, what Python syntax looks like. For example, uh, using a hashtag or a sharp symbol and then writing a bit of text is considered a comment. It's also considered syntax because it's the way that you write a comment. So this isn't real code that's being executed. This is simply just writing you know, some sort of message or uh, a note for someone to read your code. In the same way that we write um, other lines of code, for example, if we did the standard if um, name equals equals main, it should be main, and we had this line here, then this would be the equivalent. Um, th this is a proper if statement, is having some variable equal to something. Um, if you're not familiar with this line of code, I recommend going back to my other Python tutorial videos. But this is a general if statement. So if this item, whatever it is, in this case it's name, equals equals or is equal to that is what this stands for the equals equals or if we put this does not equal to but in this case we want the equal to to main then we can go ahead and uh, continue through this we can write our lines of code now we're only doing this because I want to show you guys some of the errors that you can run into when writing code. Now sometimes you may not realize this um, if you're using Visual Studio, but if I press enter from right here, it goes ahead and tabs over this little space, right? And it's kind of weird at first because you're like, well, why, why did it tap me over like that, right? Um, well, this tab is very important. Python reads different lines of code based off of tabs instead of uh, brackets, for example, in a lot of other languages. So um, let me give you an example. So if we did a print statement, it would run perfectly fine um, from here. But if I went over here, it would yell at me and say, hey, that's not quite right, because that's on the same line as this if statement, which means that there's nothing underneath this if statement. Um, so, the, there's a hierarchy in the sense that anything that's on this side of the document, of this Python document, right? Because we're just in a, uh, a text document, essentially. But it's a Python file, right? Um, so, as long as it's on the most left, that is the, that's what's read first, right? So, for example, let me go ahead and run this code. We're going to type hello world. We run our code. I go ahead and bring this up. Run it. And it just says hello world, right? Well, what happens if I do this? And I just run it like this. It expects an indention right here, right? So there's supposed to be an indention here. Um, because this is what's underneath the if. So that's why when I run it again, it doesn't give me an error. 
So this is very important. We need to keep note of these little indention errors that could occur. Also, in a for, if let's say we had um, an array, right? We're going to have an array, or we're going to have a list is what we're going to have. We're going to have a list. And it's the numbers 1, 2, and 3, right? And we did a for item in array. And we typed in, we want to print each item in the array. So that is the way that you would write printing an item in an array. And you see it goes out as 1, 2, 3. Well, what happens if we didn't have this, right? What if we just tabbed it over, 1 over? Because then nothing is technically in this for loop because something should be right where this hashtag is. There needs to be code that's lined up with the tab right here. Do you see how Visual Studio gives us this visual here about how code is supposed to be lined up? Well, all of the for, anything that happens inside of this for loop should happen within this area or right on this line. But as we can see, nothing exists. So what happens if we just run it, right? Well, if we run it, it expects an indention because Visual Studio is catching, hey, wait a second, you're supposed to have this print statement here because there's nothing going on inside of the for loop. So we're assuming that this line of code needs to be inside, right? So if we run it again, it goes back to normal and it works. So those are just little things in Python that we need to take note of. But um, let's go back to a simple if statement and we'll come back to the for as well. So when you are writing an if statement, we need some sort of, um, something needs to be equivalent, right? We wanna, we wanna check something in equivalence. So for example, let's go ahead and take a look at an if statement here, where we do if array equals equals array two. And notice how I put a colon here. This colon is very important. So we need a colon to say, okay, the following code is um, needs to be done, right? So I'm actually going to tab this over, and we're going to have the for loop inside of our if, right? So if I go ahead and run this, it runs our code like normal, right? So it's really interesting because now we have all of this code um, meeting this conditional statement. So if array is equal, remember equal equals means is equal to array two, which it does because look, array one has a one, a two, and a three. Array two has a one, a two, and a three. So that means that they are the same. There is nothing necessarily different about the two. They are both the same. They may have different names, but they are exactly the same. So for each item in the array, it's just going to print that, right? Well, what if we did a for loop outside of this if statement, right? So when I say it's outside, remember, we need to line up all the code inside of the if statement underneath it, right? So in this case, in this if statement, we want all the code lined up here, one tab away from where this was, right? This is one tab. Now, for this if statement, this is also a whole tab over, right? Well, what if it's on the same level as this for, right? And let's say we added for to this, right? And let's go ahead and write this. We're going to copy and paste this. It's just going to run the same exact code. Well, okay, so if we read this code, what it should do is print hello world. And if array one or array, which array is just one, two, three, equals or is equal to array two, which it is no longer because I added a four. So it should not print this code, but it should print the same exact code again. But why is that? So if I, it's kind of weird because 
you know, I'm printing the same code, but it should print it twice because, you know, we have these two things, right? Well, the if statement is false. So um, if I tab this over, it's underneath the if statement. So if we wanted it to print twice, we would need this condition to be true again. So for example, if I went back to three, it printed it twice. So it's very important to take note of these little things in Python syntax. I hope this video was very informative. I know this was super, super simple. Um, it wasn't really in-depth syntax, but if you have any questions about syntax, leave those in the comments below. I am more than happy to help you guys out. And if you have any other questions, you know, or you want to help some of your peers out, go into the comments and help other people out or ask a simple question. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And hopefully I can get some more Python videos out soon. All right, see you guys next time.